All right. Okay. Let's get started. Let's get started. So, while we're getting started here, actually, before I put my gloves on and start painting, um, this is the first time in a while that I've done a two session painting, anything longer than a single session. Um, and so I've had time to, to look at the painting and it's really hard to resist the urge to fix everything, but there are a couple little things I want to fix very quickly before we, um, block in the rest here. We'll start with the trees and move on to the rest, but I had another thought, um, there was a an educator, I, I really wish I knew who it was off the top of my head. I should have looked it up beforehand. Um, but he, he published a book on compositional painting. He's great. But he asked a bunch of people in his class. Okay, actually, let me back up here. My first thought, hi, hello, welcome to the stream. We're finishing this painting tonight. Second, uh, this thought is about a style. And, you know, recently, as I've been kind of jumping between, I was doing portraits exclusively for a few months. And now um, I've been, I've been focusing more on completely original content, like these landscapes and still life and self portraits and things like that, things that come from my own sources and, and things like that. And I've been thinking about style and um, this, uh, this YouTube educator, uh, he's, he's an, uh, a painter. He's an artist. He's published a book, like I mentioned about compositional paint painting. He's great. Um, I'll look up the name during the next break, maybe see if I can pull him up. Anyway, he talks about, he talks about, uh, in one of his videos about finding your style. And the thing is, is it, what he points out is that the style kind of finds you. And the reason why I wanted to point that out is here's a recent painting I did just last week of a of a separate uh, uh a separate subject this was a photo that i took the same day in the morning and then in the evening i painted this uh live on stream but if you look at the two compared to each other there's definitely uh, similarities even though this is just an underpainting right now so if you ignore that I'm noticing with my landscapes and stuff, I have a definite style. And uh, anyway, I'm jumping back and forth here. He, uh, the, the guy that uh, is on YouTube, the, what he demonstrated was he had a bunch of students all paint the same thing. Yeah, the exact same subject, same reference photo, same composition, same everything. And every single painting turned out so differently. And he made a great point, which is that, you know, you don't have to try to find a specific style your style kind of just comes innately from from what you produce and what you create. And I'm, I'm starting to see that with my with the stuff that I've been doing with oil painting. I'm starting to see kind of a style come out. It might change. It might evolve, especially as I focus more on uh, drawing and uh, draftsmanship in the future. But we'll see. Um, as for painting tonight, Sorry for that tangent, and it was kind of back and forth. I have a lot of different thoughts as I uh, get started here. We will start with the trees. Oh, hi, Dale. <laughs> yeah, so sorry, that was kind of a scattered thought. In summary, let me let me summarize everything I just said in, in just a couple of sentences. Um, It seems like the style of your art, if you try to aim to, to be a certain style, you can kind of move towards it. But 
your style is just what you create. It's just what comes out of your process. That's your style. Yeah. So. All right. Um, I'm going to fix a couple of mistakes here. Uh, not mistakes, things just that I want to fix, I guess. I'm going to grab a synthetic brush. First is this uh, cloud structure here. This is kind of uh, muddy, this cloud specifically. So I'm going to take some straight titanium white with a synthetic brush. And since this is kind of dry now, it's mostly dry. You can kind of paint over it. You didn't go too thick with it, so it's should be okay just to paint it on top of. Make that brighter. And we'll touch up some of the uh, other clouds as well. So we can just touch. Since it's dry, now we can add some more opaque paint and scrumble on top of it and uh, really push the uh, value structure of everything. So make this really bright at the edge here. These really bright as well. This. Um, let me pause something here. Okay, my uh, video preview was playing. Start over here and add a little bit more. I'm just going to add structure to pretty much all of the clouds since we had the brightest value on our brush again. So um, more experienced artists can correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I understand, this is uh, scrumbling. And that means is applying a more opaque paint on top of, or a thick layer of paint on top of uh, paint that's already laid down and kind of dried. Um, that's opposed to glazing, which is using transparent mixes to create color. So if you did like a black and white painting or a monochrome painting, you could paint over it with like a really nice like red or a blue, really a chromatic color that's like been thinned out with oil and you can you can make it more colorful. But this is from what I understand scrumbling. I mean, I've executed the technique. It's just the, the name of it. I'm not as confident with. Uh, where it's a, a more opaque paint on top of the previous layer. And I'm not doing like full on like painting on top of it, just adding a little bit of texture just to push the values. Kind of blend that out a bit. Stippling and brushing, depending on the thickness of the paint, and then wiping off the brush in between. Also, we still have this shadow here and clean that up a little bit. Blend. There we go. All right. The clouds are looking better. Not perfect, but better.
and uh, we can come back to it and wipe back anything if we need to by the end of the painting. I just wanted to add those little details before we moved on. Also, we don't want any hard edges anywhere that's far away. There's some hard edges there. Hello, Edie. Welcome back. Just touching up uh, some clouds right now. Also going to lighten up this whole horizon. Blend it out. Okay. Over here as well. Before we put the trees down. Also, the river shape is a little off, so I'm going to remix a little color to put down there before we block all of this out. All right, let's not overwork the clouds. Let's move on. I'm going to fix this uh, spot here. This one. So just gonna get a little bit of ultramarine blue, mostly titanium white. Paint that in, it's a little bright. We'll add a little bit more tight, uh, ultramarine. A touch of burnt umber, not much. A little bit of yellow ochre to desaturate. There we go. Pull it in. shape is fixed. All right, let's mix the uh, colors for the trees. Ultramarine blue, yellow ochre. Pull this up here. This is going to be a darker base value just a touch of cad yellow light. We're gonna need a lot more paint than this. Okay. This will be our base green for the trees. Also, before I forget, I'm going to put this painting back up. We have a base green here. That's pretty close to a uh, Viridian, just uh, more, a little more opaque. It's darker, of course. Um, let's see here. So we have a green. Uh, that's, that's a pretty good dark value for the uh, shadows. Well, in between point, I think we're gonna have to go a little bit darker with the burnt umber and a little more ultramarine blue. And these will be the a little more these. This will be the color for the trees. 
There we go. Much darker value. So by uh, adding the ultramarine and the burnt umber together, that creates, that's what I generally use instead of black. So anytime I need a black or something close to black, I actually just mix ultramarine blue and burnt umber together. I don't use ivory black or chromatic black. I have tubes of both of those things um, back there somewhere, but when I want black, that's what I use. And so uh, that's also what I do for color mixes. So if I want to make my color mix uh, dramatically darker or closer to black, uh, I add burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And we should add a little bit of burnt sienna since we have, or not burnt sienna, uh, alizarin crimson, since we have a little more of that now. Okay, so now we have our darker value. Um, I'm gonna put some liquid on the palette. It should help it spread out. And we're gonna just block in the darker trees. So we can get started on painting here. All right, so I'm putting a little bit of liquid on the palette. Smells lovely. Love it. I'm totally joking, by the way. Liquid is awful and toxic. But I've been using it for this painting, pretty much just this painting. It's the first one I've, well, the last landscape painting. I've started using liquid a little bit more, but I don't plan on using it long term. It's just worked really well for layering stuff. Because it's quick drying and it's also a little glossy, so it keeps the values, the darker values, a little better when it dries. Okay, mix in the liquid. There we go. Do a tiny bit more. I want to make this go a long way. Even though it's just this small ridge of trees, we need enough. Okay, let's see. All right, the brush we want to use is probably going to be, let's think, do we want to do synthetic or hog hair, hog's hair? Bone hog hair. Let's see. All right, so we'll start. Actually, let's go on this side just to make sure we get all the values in. So these foreground trees are all going to have the same shadow value, just the the darkest value, except for the uh, deer. Well, it'll be about the same as the deer, just a uh, different color. And the shadows for this tree line, something I've noticed with the reference is that the, it's kind of harder to tell since the reference is smaller on your screen, but on this line here and with basically with any uh, shadows of trees in the landscape I'm seeing with the sun uh, higher up, the shadows are more weighted towards the bottom. So we don't want to block in too many of the shadows higher up. Um, we'll do some uh, for some of the trees that are showing that in the reference, but not a lot. Most of the shadows will be weighted towards the horizon. So say for this area, 
we have pretty much just a line right here that is completely dark. And then a lot of shapes kind of sprout out of that for the shadows. I'm uh, also looking at the reference and squinting my eyes just to get some simplified shapes. This tree, a, a few of the trees are almost like 75% in shadow. So like this one, this one, um, some of these smaller ones over here are more in shadow. In fact, I should just kind of drop some shadow value simplify this over here. There we go. It's a little bit desaturated back here. I'm gonna thin it out, just cheat in those values. So we have a couple more trees over here that have shadows. clean this up. Just using a Q-tip. Gonna go a step up in value. Just let me lighten up some of these here with a paper towel. We'll soften them up, I should say. So kind of stumble in. Some darker values. up here we get some ultramarine cad yellow light yellow ochre just a touch of burnt umber and a little bit of alizarin crimson to desaturate
Let's do a little more ultramarine. And then a touch of titanium white. Okay. There is our step up in value. Let me look at it here. Um, you may want to, no, let's not desaturate. I'm gonna make sure the foreground is a little bit more chromatic and saturated than our background. Things that are farther in the distance that have more air between the eyes and our eyes and the uh, things we're looking at in the distance. So I'm just going to go full paint here and get a synthetic brush, small one. There we go. Um, so Dion's talking about, uh, oh yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm glad you appreciate uh, explaining things. I, I try to. I feel like I'm a bit repetitive since I've had so many of these streams now. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, um, squinting is like definitely like one of the big things when oil painting or at least when you're trying to do realism. So when you're doing like charcoal or it could be a lot of different mediums. But when you're trying to do realism, it's one of the old tricks. Squint your eyes and uh, try to focus on the general before you focus on the details. And it helps you see the shapes that you should be painting beforehand. And it kind of creates that illusion that your face is, that your, uh, <laughs> that your mind is looking for. I thought of faces because that's, that's something I really practiced a lot with the uh, portraits. Okay. Start over here. I'm going to be painting up into the skyline as well. Okay, and now I'm just uh, I'm doing some very basic like paint drawing. Just uh, taking this um, contrasting value, which is still pretty dark, but is just more chromatic, and I'm blocking in the highlights. And even though it's not like the highlights, it's just like if you think about the shadow versus the light, I'm just simplifying the shape of the trees. And I've already abstracted and changed a bit from the reference, so this doesn't match uh, perfectly with everything, but I'm still looking at the reference a lot to get an idea of what I should be abstracting and painting. And I'm using the corner of the brush now to get some texture and abstract a bit. And then after we do uh, this color, we'll, we'll get a very slightly lighter value and just hit some of the edges as well.
Okay. Got a lot more to block in here. We'll just keep going from left to right. And as I'm blocking in, I'm just kind of working with the canvas as well and seeing um, what seems distracting. And if it needs more paint, I have more paint, or if it needs to be blended, I blend it. So this is the part where it's just uh, using reference, but also some creative decisions. It's not just random. It is, a, I mean, it's a little bit random, but um, I'm, I'm, for the sake of time, I could spend, I could put this on a large canvas and, you know, stretch on a large stretch canvas and spend many hours meticulously matching every tree in my reference photo or, you know, trees of my own making, but that's not the type of painting that I personally like to do. That's just my own preference. Um, the type of painting I prefer to do is, you know, like Ala Prima, but also I love the concept of abstracting real life uh, uh, into two dimensional space. And, you know, I lean a lot on photos right now, but I've also, you know, I've done like still life and things like that and working from life, but it's, there's some magic to it. You know, it's almost like an illusion. I don't have to spend 40 hours to create a painting that I like, you know? Touch up some of these shadows here. Okay. Also, a lot of these edges here at the bottom will be touched up when we uh, paint in or we block in this area. All right, let's keep going through. Let's go over this side. come back through here with a more bluish color these transitional trees in this area no no I'm gonna sweat it it's fine We are at 15 minute mark. We have a little bit of time before the first break. Let's 
get this lighter value and crunch in some of these trees. Just gonna take cad yellow light, mix it in with this. Touch of titanium white. A little bit of yellow ochre. Some of these larger shapes over here, um, the edge, the light catches a little bit more. So this will help bring out the form of these trees that we have abstracted. So it's not, it's not a whole lot brighter, but makes a difference, I think. Especially once we get through all of this. Gonna get more of these highlights in here. Back there. Over there. Uh, Edie asks, uh, do you varnish your paintings when you're done? Uh, yeah, I actually, I do have a, I have a bottle of varnish. I have varnished some paintings, but, um, I have about a backlog of about 30 paintings that I need to varnish and I'm going to use Gamvar to, uh, varnish that, uh, varnish those sometime here in the near future. <laughs> Uh, they're all ready to varnish. With Ganbar uh, varnish, you can use it when it's dry to the touch, touch as opposed to waiting a lot longer when it's fully cured. But yeah, I, I do. I prefer to uh, varnish. I just have not done it lately. So I'll do that on uh, stream as well. I'll have a stream and I'll make a few uh, TikTok videos and YouTube shorts out of it. Some varnishing compilations. All 
All right, I'm gonna make some of these values a little bit more coherent at the base. These trees, just to kind of tie everything together. A little bit more titanium white here with these colors. It's blocking this area. All right. It's starting to look pretty good. We'll clean up these edges when we paint in, uh, we block in this area. Let me uh, touch up some of these edges here. Okay, I think that's a uh, might be a good spot for a break. And then we'll, after the break, we'll just in one shot, uh, just take like an hour or two, get the main land area, this pasture locked in and We'll focus on these shadows that we see here. Once we get that all blocked in, we'll do the deer. That'll just be that last final touch and maybe touch up anything else that we see. Uh, before that, let me look at some of these clouds here. We should touch these up before they dry. I mean, they shouldn't dry really at all. I didn't put anything in the titanium white, but I'll use that as an excuse to touch up some of these edges that are a little more distracting. So uh, these refinements I'm making right now aren't based on what I see in the reference. They're based just purely on what I see on the canvas. And if I see something that's distracting, 90% of the time, uh, just blending an edge around it fixes it. Other times it needs to be repainted or another value needs to be put down. Um, but most of the time it's just some sort of edge that I need to change after the blocking process. And by that, I mean, if the edge is a hard edge or if it's a soft edge. So that just means blending. And even though it's subtle, it makes a big difference in the final image. That way your eye is not automatically going to, you know, one weird hard edge at a cloud here or one weird hard edge over here. You want everything to be more coherent. And um, at least for me in my painting approach, as long as I'm staying conscious of those edges, um, the only sharper edges I should see are in the foreground and that's what we'll see with the deer as well. They're really going to be the only thing that have a super hard edge. Uh, this is a little softer here. It's a little hard, but, um, I mean, value wise, they're pretty close contrast wise, the deer that we're going to block in, uh, for right here, right there, and right there are going to have the highest contrast and they'll also have the hardest edge out of everything on the whole painting. Obviously, we want the clouds to 
um, have soft edges, but we don't want to go so soft that they lose their form. So I'm just going through here and if anything catches my eye that looks distracting, I'm just going to try to lighten up an edge without overworking it. But as of right now, I think that looks okay. I think that looks good. So as is custom on this channel, we take breaks just to make sure that we can take a step away from the painting and uh, get a little bit of a rest. Um, so I'm going to do a, a 15, 15 minute break, not a 20 minute like I've done in the past, since this will be a pretty quick wrap up, I'll do a 15 minute break and uh, we'll come back and we'll finish the painting without any more breaks will be the last part of, of the painting. So um, appreciate you joining. If you're watching right now, if you're watching the future, if you enjoy this content, I encourage you to uh, like uh, the video. And also if you wanna catch more streams in the future, you can subscribe. That way you're notified in your home feed or your subs uh, subscription feed. All right, so I'm gonna put up a timer here and uh, we'll be back in about 15 minutes.
All right. Let's finish this painting. So I have my own headphones here. Uh, plug in some music of my own that's not royalty free that I'm going to listen to so I don't get copyright striked for my headphone I'll still be watching chat so game plan we're going to mix uh, some green for this area including the shadow that's going to hit the edge on some of these parts here very edge here. Welcome back, Edie. Um, as well as on the island, all the way up the edge here. So it's going to really help define every this whole shape and form. And then we're going to mix uh, some colors that we're going to kind of just wash over this area, including some lighter colors here that um, define this hill edge that we can see in the reference. And and then after that, we'll uh, we'll do the deer. So that's the plan. We're going to finish this. Probably take, my guess, an hour and a half, two hours, two and a half at most. But probably two hours. We won't take any more breaks. We'll just go for it. If you have any questions, leave them in the chat. We're just going to go full painting mode here. And make sure the music is still playing here. It is. It's kind of a cool song. All right. Okay. Let's get started. I'm gonna turn the microphone away while I. Uh, Gloves here. Tonight I am uh, listening to Lewis Cole. The newest album. It's two newest albums. Who my jam? recently. I'd love to listen on stream, but there's really just no way for me to do it without uh, getting into copyright trouble on my channel. That's fine. It's it's kind of weird if you're into like modern, like contemporary punk and jazz stuff like that. I'm not into contemporary jazz, but more like me. Anything that's kind of bullpen-ish. No shame to admit it. All right, let's go. Got my gloves. Got the microphone up here. Whoa. Microphone is uh, falling. Let's fix this real quick. So let's uh, fix this camera. Move it up a little bit. There we go. All right. That's fine. darker values. We can kind of feed off of what we already have here. Just make it a little bit more green.
Yellow ochre. Okay, we'll gradate between gradate between these uh, two colors. Let's get to painting. All right, we need uh, a little bit of, we need to push back the river here so we can get a straight line. So we'll get titanium white, ultramarine blue.
Tim, thank you for joining. Uh, he says, looks beautiful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. We're going to get this uh, painting finished in the next hour or two. try to get this uh, shadow here nice and straight just the corner of the brush there we go you know there's sometimes let me pause my music here there's sometimes when you paint <laughs> and you just like you get the stroke right just the first time like I have that feeling right now. Doesn't happen often. <laughs> so we got that. That's perfect. All right, next up, I got all of the dark values here. We'll keep it on this brush. We'll, we'll keep it on the palette. We'll go up in value and kind of block in more of this grass and then move on to this uh, larger shape here. Gonna mix up some more color here. It's a little bit too dark. We want to stay pretty green. Probably a little bit more saturated than that. just fell over. There we go. Fixed it. We used a lot more cad yellow light here to get a green mix. Mix that color that we did previously. It's a little less saturated. Okay, just a touch more cad yellow light. There we go.
going to move to this brush. I didn't get all the uh, shadow areas. Move on to the next color. Uh, Dione said, if you what? Um, I said, uh, let's move on. Let's move on to the, uh, sorry, I have my headphones on. Let's move on to the next color. My microphone keeps falling over. We're just gonna work with it. There we go. Thank you. 
gonna do a chromatic mid-tone here to transition between some areas. Also kind of throw it around just so we have it on the canvas here. That will step up a lot higher in value and we'll go towards yellow. No, 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 it's fine. No worries, Dion. Let's go a lot more yellow here. It's pretty much straight yellow ochre. A little bit of titanium white. Yeah, that's what we want. Fix up this edge here too. Oh, we have a darker value. We have to block in for this little peak of land. Comes in here. Sorry if you can hear my headphones right now. <laughs> it's like crazy saxophone music. It's a uh, Lewis Cole. You put them back on so you can't hear it. Gonna add a touch of titanium white to what I have on the brush. This is just a little bit more distant. Won't make much of a difference, but. I'm not going to follow the colors exactly as the uh, reference is, but exactly as the uh, reference represents them, I should say. But I'm going to follow it roughly. Like on this hill, it should be a little bit more yellow, but I'm going with green. I think the more important feature is this, these lines that we add here. Also, I'm going to add, I'm just going to sp spritz it in everywhere. Just 
just to make sure that we have homogeny throughout the uh, painting. We'll get some other colors in there as well. Kind of blurred in this uh, lake that comes in here. But this layer underneath is dry. So we should be able to use a Q-tip and just kind of And then repaint those darker values. Also touch up this area here. All right, it's starting to come together. All right, so we'll get a lighter, lighter value based off of this. So we'll just get a little bit of titanium white, touch of cad yellow light, just a little bit of burnt umber too. And a little bit of alizarin crimson, a little more yellow ochre, and a touch more yellow or titanium white. And we're going to do kind of a big, bold move across the whole painting here, which we blended in. We want something way more like yellow, desaturated, to be honest. Do a little bit of cad red light, probably a little too much there. Yellow ochre, titanium white. See how that looks in comparison. It's a little darker, well, something lighter, some more titanium white. I think that's it. Also get this highlight color up at the top of the hill here. Some of these parts. Also going to push up the brush a little bit in some of these parts to imply trees. But we keep the general shape that we already created. stuff we'll wisp around kind of here
We're gonna let the underpainting show for the more reddish parts too, to the top of the island. Um, I won't overwork this. We might move on to the deer. Let's get a color mix for that. So we'll use this, mix it with burnt umber. That should be a good base color, to be honest. A little bit of yellow ochre to brighten up the value a little bit. Time to focus. I'm gonna switch out my gloves here. Take off my headphones. Working on some small features. I'm going to need a paper towel as well. So I have to try to block in these deer without making it look funky. It's kind of a small canvas, 16 by six inches. So I'm gonna try to make this work. So uh, I see some more shadows I want to block in here before we add the deer. Try not to overwork this. Get some uh, green over here. Some 
then let me emphasize the dark values right behind the island here. up the river's edge there there we go let's get some of these darker values back over here just to make sure we're working the whole canvas Deer, deer time. Hello, Elsa. Thank you for joining. There's one deer. Let's do the next one. Let's do the one that's over here. Um, we have changed the composition. The river apparently kind of comes back over here from what I decided instead of having to go up higher. So we'll bring in this deer a little bit over here. Totally totally intentional i can tell you we totally did not freehand the sketch and just guess on a lot of stuff <laughs> that's fine we got the essence of the landscape that one looks more like a bison we use a q-tip here clean it up Do little highlights on them as well. And we're going to do this guy right here. Touch them up after we block them in.
Yeah, we should make a, I'm seeing something right now we need to fix. Before we cinch up this painting, this whole area needs to be a little bit more coherent and less distracting. going to get the exact shape. The uh, canvas is a little bit too small in a vertical position. That's the excuse I'm going to use. Soften up some of these edges here. Just a tiny bit. Here, here, just looking at anything that looks distracting, and I'm gonna try to fix it up. Right, let's get this darker value here and add a little bit more shadow to these guys. Just a touch of highlight. That will use titanium white in this bright yellow ochre mix we did earlier. And we'll just do a hint of a highlight here at the top for that one. A hint on top of this one. Kind of missed the mark on that one. Let's fix it here. It's better. And then just a touch here. Deer kind of look messed up right now. Let me fix that up. They hardly look like deer at all, but for the purpose of this painting, it works. All right, let's get a little bit more reds in. Let me get this up brush. Let's get. This mix with the touch of a lizard and crimson. And yellow ochre. And get in some of these reds that we see in the fields. Just being abstract about it. Some down here. Use a smaller brush. Just right on top of this island.
kind of hard to see in the stream, but in person I can see the reds getting added here. It's just very subtle. subtle and we have darker value in the mix here that's reddish a little bit of yellow ochre and that shape can add in I think that is close to done. A couple of highlights here. And we're following the uh, buffering method, even though we broke this up into two sessions. Pretty much working section by section, we fixed up some of the stuff for the clouds just to push the values. But uh, you know, we're not going to sweat the small details. Just gonna get the general idea first. There we go. Get that highlight on top of this deer fixed. I had a concern when I started this painting that since the deer are so small, it'd be easy to okay. That's the point I'm at right now. So I'm trying to make changes that are very simple, but in the process I'm not being controlled enough in my brush strokes. In other words, I'm being lazy. I think that is that point where you need to stop overlooking the deer. Let me fix a couple of other things that I see, including the water edges. See how that looks about the same. Abstracting these edges a little bit just to make sure it's not too smooth. Okay. 
Let's call it there. Maybe. Hold on. Just fix this one edge here. Yeah, that's good. All right. So, kind of nice. We broke it up into two streams. Mm. Pretty happy with how this turned out. Uh, I'm saying I'm wrapping it up, but I'm seeing just a couple things here that could help. I do this every stream. There we go. That's way better. edges here. Distract things a little bit. Cool. I like it. Sign it. Let's do a darker value for this green right here. If you've ever been curious, I mean, it's probably not that hard to figure out. Oh, you can't even see that in the stream. Let me adjust this again. Here we go. We were off center there. My goodness. And uh, also, let me fix just one other thing. Just a little high contrast here. I mean, this deer does not, this shape does not match what that deer looks like in the reference at all, but you know, it implies that a deer is there, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, let's uh, call it then. Thank you so much for uh, joining. If you haven't uh, done so already, consider uh, uh, subscribing and liking the video, like uh, the caption says in the video, it helps me out a lot. I uh, really appreciate you joining. And uh, we'll see you again in a couple of days. We'll do something different, probably not a landscape, but we will see. So I uh, appreciate you joining tonight for watching this later on. Whenever this is that you're uh, listening to my voice, I hope you're having a great day and I hope that you make the best of it. So uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time.